Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Sing. Sing it, boys. <laughs> that is outstanding. Just the smooth, melodic flow that goes through your eardrum as you listen to this. Very smooth. I just want to grab some hot chocolate, sit next to a fire with my lady on a bearskin rug. That's awesome. <laughs> you just have to find a lady first. All right. All right. Don't, tell, don't tell my wife I'm trying to find a lady. <laughs> well, at any rate, guys, what's up? Welcome to After Buzz TV Spotlight On. We are blessed because we are joined in the studio by superb, incredible, unprecedented, phenomenal musicians. We'll get to them in a second. In the meantime, I'm Kevin John, alongside, joined by the one, the only. Hi, I'm Kevin John, joined, oh, sorry. I'm Daniel Weiss, joining you as always. Uh, thank you so much for joining us with this Spotlight On, a very special one. Absolutely, this is a special Spotlight On indeed. As you hear the song in the background, that right there is just a little preview of what we got here for you guys. Yes. In the studio with us right now, we have from season nine, finalist, fourth place overall in America. So first place in our hearts. Absolutely. <laughs> and souls, of course. Still first place in mine. Um, no diss to Matt Franco or anyone else. But at any rate, they are here with us live in the studio, and they go by the names of Sons of Serendip. Give it up for them. <laughs> Real quick, Micah, Kadaro, Kendall, and Mason are all here with us. Gentlemen, how are you feeling? Mm, happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, very happy to be here. <laughs> We're happy to have you, in case you didn't see that from our enthusiasm <laughs> to open this. Uh, now, you know, real quick, guys, you know, let's, uh, obviously you have been, are fresh off a tour, which you're, I guess, in the midst or on the last road of it right now. You performed last night at the Mint. Uh, how was that performance? It was great. We had a great turnout. Uh, it was a packed house at the Mint, and people from all over came. Folks drove in from like 10 hours away. Mm -hmm. um, My lady flew in from Brazil. And yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. From Brazil? <laughs> That's That's a a I have no idea. You know, but, um, it, was, it was a great audience, lots of energy, and we had a great time performing for them. Yeah. That's good. Now, I was going to say, before you guys open up and perform your shows, you, is there like a little ritual or anything that you guys do backstage before? Mm -hmm. We definitely pray. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. It, it, it helps to ground us. Uh, right. and then we just remember why we're there. And, you know, we're just there to share our gifts and just leave whatever all we have out there on the stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's good. And, and obviously you guys do leave it out there on the stage. I was going through your guys' Twitter feed earlier today, and so many fans were saying just incredible things about you. So glad I came here. So glad I hopped the flight from Brazil to get here. <laughs> this isn't Matt Franco. I was <laughs> doomed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, that, that that is true, but they can always see him in Vegas. And, of course, mm. I mean, who sons of serendip Matt Franco. I mean, come on. Well, oh. Yes, I agree. Well, no, let's not put them in a bad position. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Very different Very different. Good luck on your special coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> special, yeah. Yeah, now, you know, I, I guess let's go back a little bit, you know, to the, to the origins before you guys were sons of serendip and, you know, sitting on the couch of After Buzz TV. <laughs> Uh, That's the pinnacle of your career. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Man. Yeah. laughs> I mean, forget Oprah or Jay Leno's couch or Fallon's right, couch. Yeah. This right. is it right here. <laughs> Sorry, Ellen, but this is the couch. Uh, um, but speaking of Jay Leno, you guys actually were on uh, Jay Leno, right? Or opened up? You for, opened for Jay Leno. For Jay Leno yeah. yeah. Look at in that. Connecticut, Sanford, Connecticut. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What? Let me ask you then. Opening up for a comedian, which isn't a normal thing, I'm sure, for you guys. What was that like? Were you afraid that maybe the audience wouldn't be into it? or No, because no, I, I don't think we, we were afraid. We, um, you know, we always have, for some reason, people love our music, and we're very glad that they do. Well, not for some reason. It's fantastic. Well, thank you. <laughs> because it touches hearts and souls and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And um, Jay Leno is such a great guy. We've all known through television for years. I think we all were very confident that it would go over well. And yeah. 
It did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we used a lot of humor in our performances too, so it yeah. wasn't really like out of place at yeah. all. So. Right, oh, right. perfect. Yeah. yeah. So do you guys like actually do like sketches or something in your performances? <laughs> it's just, just Michael Christian. We, we just share. We share a lot of stories. Okay. Yeah. yeah and share them with us real quick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not to put you on. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not you. We have, to, I mean, we have to be in the moment. We have to be, oh, in, the have to be in the moment. Yeah, so okay. That makes sense. Show. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll work you up to that now. <laughs> You know, I guess speaking of stories that you guys share, uh, one thing I thought was interesting was you guys all had very unique and intriguing backstories on how you each ended up at Boston. Mm. And, you know, for, you know, as I was, I was reading, one of you guys thought it was Boston College and not Boston University. Or so, who, who was that? Was yeah, that, that, was, that was me. The, the lawyer. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, you you know, are, obviously, it's, I guess you could say it's divine and not coincidental that right. you made that mishap. But, right, right. Um, when did you find out that you were at the, you, you were at the school that you didn't think it was? So, uh, it was at, I might have been a year in, where I was looking back at some old emails, and, like, my pre-law advisor told me to apply to Boston College. So, um, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm at Boston University. So, this is around the time where I was actually learning the, the difference between Boston College and Boston University. So, I was like, oh, well, I didn't go where I thought I was intending <laughs> <laughs> to go. <laughs> well, it, it all worked out because you yeah. wouldn't be sitting here with these. Th oh, exactly. Or you would just have met three other guys and performed. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, we were probably in competition with no, <laughs> three. <yeah. laughs> it would be the Craig Lewis Cordero band. Right? <laughs> <There you go. laughs> mm. so, but no, that's, that's, that's real interesting. And, um, you know, after you guys were obviously all in school and graduate school at yeah. that, mm. um, you guys all kind of you know, team together and form, you know, form this super group. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like in the beginning stages of forming this? Was there a little bit of tension? Was there friction? Was there, you know, uh, I guess creative differences? What? I don't really think so because um, a little backstory, Kendall and Cordero grew up together in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I just packed a Ford Explorer and drove to Boston and met Kendall. Mm -hmm. And we were roommates. And so at once upon a time, Kendall, myself, Mason, and Kadir, we were all roommates. And we all kind of, and even, and Michael's the only one from Boston. <laughs> but we all kind of, yeah, we all kind of have this same general spirit. Mm -hmm. Kind of calm, collected, nice people. Yeah. That cares uh, more about helping others than materialistic things. Mm. And we didn't know exactly what the music was. You say was that. I didn't see you guys drive up in a Ferrari out no. there. Oh, see, that, that was a Bentley. Yeah. It was like, it was a stretch Bentley, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, nevertheless, I guess our guess inner spirits are so much the same that making music really wasn't much of a struggle. Right. I don't think. I, that's the way I feel. I think everybody feels the same. I agree. Yeah. I would I would add that um, in terms of personalities, we get, a, we get along, but there's... Um, we come from different musical backgrounds, so two from a classical world, two from more contemporary, and uh, I can say in the beginning there was a little bit of a of a struggle with in terms of how how to arrange something or how to go about something because we have different viewpoints. Mm. And um, the thing with uh, Kendall and I is that we've worked out a lot of that before. We used to go. Um, Busking in the subways. Mm. Um, that was how we helped pay so our rent. You said busking. <laughs> busking. It's like a term they yeah. use. I guess I don't know in the northeast for yeah. you just yeah. basically a musician who goes and plays. Oh, with yeah. the bucket yeah. or something. Yeah, right. the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Busking. Yeah, yeah. Busking. yeah. So oh. he and I, we, he and I. That's where we, you know, in the beginning we had a lot of creative differences. Oh, but geez, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. But we mm. we were able to eventually work them out, and Kendall's able to see things my way. Now you see no. that. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> it. Oh. Shots fired. <laughs> Step back. He's a, he's a lawyer. It's yeah. Feel yeah. soon. Yeah. I object. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fifty percent lawyer. Yeah. Father, it's genetic. Oh wow. I, I would add also that mm. uh, when it came to becoming a group uh, I think that internally individually we had to you know deal with our own um, you know concerns like we were all going in very different directions um, wow and and like I was a teacher Kendall was a teacher and a performer like he was he was starting his own you know a career as a soloist like as a mm. solo artist and um and Mason was a teacher, Cordero was a lawyer, and so like we were, we were all moving in very different directions. And I think that, for me personally, I know I had to ask a, a lot of questions about like, and really reflect on like, is this the path? You know, I have a path that I'm on right now. Do I want to jump? You know, from this path to a whole mm. different yeah. journey that I have no idea how it's going to turn out. 
And well, are you happy you made the jump? Yes, <laughs> very, very happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy. Were you all uh, doing your day job before AGT, or yeah. was that yeah. wow? So you were able to be like. Hey kids, not coming back next year. <laughs> <laughs> Going on a world tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't quite so nice when I said that. You said peace out, peace. left. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hopped in the Ford Explorer. Exactly. Like, I just kept on going. Right. Just kept going. Yeah. Cordero I, dropped his briefs and was out of there. Your Honor, I quit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now you know. So I guess speaking of AGT, who, who, whose idea was it to initially apply for that? Uh, Micah's. Yeah, it was mine. Oh, uh, Micah. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we had uh, joked in the past about, you know, putting together a performance at some point. It was just sort of like, oh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But um, but an AGT scout reached out to an a cappella group that I was a part of before. And, um, and they weren't able to audition. So then he said, well, reach out to your alumni and just see, you know, if anybody's interested in auditioning. And I was originally trying to start an a cappella group, but nobody was on board. And so I was like, oh, yeah, Cordero, Kendall, Mason, let's just see you know, what we can do. And so I reached mm-hmm. out to them. They said yes. We sent in a video. And the next thing you know, things just started moving really quickly. Yeah. Oh, wow. So That's you guys perfect. actually sent in a video before you actually had a physical um, audition. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And w- just out of curiosity, what did you guys sing in that video? Um, we sent a ton of songs. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. mo- it was a yeah. long audition video then. Well, it was an yeah. album. Right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a 45 minute long Here's our anthology. Right. <laughs> well, the first two songs that we sent in, though, were I Lived by uh, One Republic yeah. and Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Cohen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so when we sent that in, then three weeks later we got a call, and then they were like, we need more music, and we need to hear your story. Mm-hmm. And so we wrote up our story, and then we sent in more music, and then they're like, we need more music. And so we just kept sending yeah. in videos, and eventually we settled on the song um, "Somewhere Only We Know," and uh, and that's the one that we did for the audition. The last show, show in Madison, yeah. yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's the one that you obviously did in the finals is uh, as well. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That, we did two. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, they brought it back. We brought it back. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Now, you know, I, I guess with with speaking of America's Got Talent, you know, obviously as a viewer, when you watch that. A lot of times we don't know what really goes on behind the scenes and, you know, how everything is orchestrated. Now, as far as the songs that you guys had sang on there, were those songs that uh, the producers of the show encouraged you to do? Or did you guys have complete, uh, complete creative control on what you wanted to, to sing? Yeah, there was a collaboration. Like, we would, you know, recommend songs and they would say, hey, you know, let's see if we can we can work that out. How would it fit with their show and the audience that they have? Uh, and then there was licensing that we also had to, you know, you have to deal with oh, that yeah. kind of stuff on, on the, the show. The legalities. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why you got <laughs> I, I quit. Remember, I quit. <laughs> yeah, so That's not his position both, anymore. Yeah, yeah, it went both ways. Some that we recommended, some that they recommended, but we tried to meet in the middle, and you know, it turned out pretty well, I think. Was there ever a time when you guys really wanted to do something, and they were like, "Yeah, I don't think that's gonna Wrecking happen." Wrecking Ball's not gonna work. <laughs> that's what I wanted. Baby got back. He's not gonna fit with this one right here. So that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but for the mo- most yeah. part, they were pretty. I think it went well. It yeah. might have been like one or two we might have wanted to do, but we had a certain sound on this show, and we wanted to kind of keep that, and I'm mm-hmm. uh, glad we did. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were a, a dream to work with. They were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very supportive. They're still supportive today. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are. Well, cool. That's yeah. great. Well, that's yeah. good to know. It's not like you guys are on the show contestants, and they kick you out, and they're like, yeah. all right, on to our, you know, screw you guys, but no, I'm, right. <laughs> I'm glad they nice keep up with everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, can you explain, like, the, the I guess the competitive aspect on there? I know I know they portray it as everyone's friendly, all the contestants get along and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. you guys are incredibly nice. You know, I can see anybody that wouldn't get along with you guys. <laughs> but um, were there, did you, did you feel competitive tension from other contestants while you were there? No. No. They tried to That's create great. it. It's <laughs> oh, they did. Yeah. Well, during Judgment Week. During that Judgment Week in particular. Yeah. Like, they would have us like, do these interesting two shots where we'll be in the foreground, someone yeah. else in the background, and they would want to encourage us to to kind of, well, they would try to coach out of us things like, so do you think they're better? Do you think? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I guess just to so build drama for the show. <laughs> but what is one reason why Matt Frankel won't win? Go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, they would ask stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. But I, nobody was really willing to do it. Yeah. That's Not, great. Yeah. yeah. 
It was, it was so, a good group this year. Group. <laughs> or last yeah, year's season. Was right. Yeah, because we had this year, we interviewed the Craig Lewis band. I don't know if you've seen oh, them. Yeah, yeah, but they, great. they yeah, got they the sign. Golden Buzzer. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone backstage was like, no! Oh. <laughs> so it's good to hear that everybody, your season was really nice and yeah. into it. Really, yeah, really Absolutely. Into it. They're yeah. supportive yeah. of each other. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Was there, when you first auditioned, was there any thoughts in your heads like we're gonna get to the finals? We'll be in the top four, or is it like let's just do it and see what happens? Exactly. That's our yeah. Motto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just do it and see what, see what happens. happens. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I think it was it was very surprising on the the very first audition at Madison Square Garden. Um, I think that's when we realized that whoa, something special is going on here. Like we got on the stage and we were just tuning, like doing a sound check, and the audience would just burst into wow. a. I mean. It was it was crazy, yeah. so we were like, okay, well, you know, maybe, yeah, let's just see what happens. <laughs> right <laughs> after the sound check, then we went on stage and, and then performed, and I mean the same response, if not bigger, and you know it's like, whoa, okay, this this might be going somewhere, you yeah. know, and it it did. Yeah, it apparently did, and it's yeah. still going. It's soaring. Yeah. yeah. Was there a break in between? AGT, I guess airing because well it was live. So was there mm-hmm. a break in between it ending and you just going and touring, or was it just immediate? I say immediate, like right after the show we went on the AGT tour, right to in Vegas. Vegas. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, but also oh yeah, I just yeah if you have really had which time. we happened at we we saw that too. Oh, oh wow. yeah, we went. Uh, you saw that <laughs> me and Kaori. <laughs> I was. Let's say the fans of you guys went to go and see that. I was a huge fan, but let's be honest. I had Wu-Tang Clan tickets or going to Vegas. And you uh, guys are great. Yeah. Wu-Tang, <laughs> but... They're legends. Man, can, let me ask yeah. you this. Can Wu-Tang, can they play the cello? Uh, can depends. they play the harp? <laughs> see. Can they harmonize with one another? <laughs> I rest my no, case. No, but Wu-Tang Clan ain't Boom. nothing to mess with. That is true. And they For said, sure. they didn't say mess with, they said something else. Yeah, no, we, we don't just talk like that. that. <laughs> we, all, we know what I was doing. Well, well, well I guess... But, uh, but yeah, that was basically my question, just like how immediate was just getting to where you are, I guess, today. Yeah, well, right after the show ended, we uh, started a, a um, crowdfunding campaign um, for our album, our first right. album that we released in January, mm-hmm. and um, and so that I think that was the first thing that we did, yeah. and then we we started performing um, as a group, and um, and we left our day jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, hey man, yeah. <laughs> out. Well, and, and you guys got on the top 100 of the Billboard yeah, with that album. We did. What was that like when you found that out? Oh. I can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we called each other like, yeah. did you see it? Just, like, yeah, man, I did. Yeah, yeah, so it was really exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, 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 it almost makes it, you know, it, it almost kind of makes it feel that everything is worthwhile at that particular point. You exactly. know, all the hard work, the sacrifice, the deciding which career to go, the getting in your, you know, SUV and driving to God knows where, and yeah. figuring things out. Right. You know, it's kind of like, you know, that, that that was probably one of the most defining moments, would you guys say, is as far as achieving a certain level. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, one thing I was going to ask is, you know, each of you guys in this group, you guys all bring something different and very unique. Um, I guess we could just go around. I'm just curious, who who are your musical influences? <laughs> mm. Sorry. Yeah, we'll start 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 with with start, oh, start with Micah. Oh, start with me. I like yeah. Yeah, over there. We'll just start. All right, then let's start with Cordero. Micah, Micah's got it. So, Micah, Micah, we were both the same. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, so, okay, so I play the piano as well, uh-huh. and uh, as far as the piano, one of my biggest influences was actually Yanni, and um, and Cord- it was the same for Cordero. And then when we connected, it was like, oh wow, like you that play is like Yanni, yeah. the, two, the only two Yanni fans. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say um, as a vocalist, um, India Ari and Bobby McFerrin are two of my favorite wow. vocalists. And, I saw that you recently met Bobby McFerrin about a month ago or I something did, like yeah. that. Were you happy? Was, yeah, I was very happy. Yeah, you and you worry. didn't worry. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I didn't worry. Um, yeah, I went on a. It was a week long retreat, uh, music workshop, and th- that he was leading with his team, and I uh, had some time to spend with him and to you know just pick his brain a little bit about uh, just exp- his experience on stage, and uh, yeah, it was it was a really good experience for me. Really good moment. Mm. So. Here's a little song I wrote. That you don't have to go into <laughs> something. I just, I just got not. I, I got a moment there. Let's, let's uh, right. move on to Kendall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for me, um, you know, classically trained, it was uh, Yo Yo Ma, and um, 
see Stephen Iserlis. Uh, those were two of my, my favorite um, cellists. Uh, and then on the, the composition side, uh, I love film scores. Actually, all of us do. Uh, so Hans Zimmer uh, is, is, a, is a favorite amongst most of us. Yeah. This was about those three guys for, for me personally. Okay, that's yeah. what's up. Very yeah. classical there. Oh, yeah, you thank know. you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone contemporary or... Uh, are, yeah, um, he said Hans Zimmer. Uh, John Legend, John Legend's great. Oh, we were able to. Op- we actually opened up for for John Legend as well wow. a few months ago. So who's that? Uh, John Legend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he's, he's the guy married to the co-host of Lip Sync Battle on Spike TV. That's who he is. Oh man, jeez, yeah. I feel bad for. for her because like she has to carry that household. I know, right? Yeah, it's terrible. Married to a struggling artist. Oh, or John, so. who would you say? Was <laughs> John McGrenn? <laughs> well, get to all. That, that's that's Mason? awesome. Like, yeah, for me, I have like a lot of influences, but uh, Harp Wise would be my uh, teacher and mentor, and Hobson Pilot. She's done a lot um, in the classical world because Kendall and I were both in the same classical program, mm. uh, and Hobson Pilot again. But anyway, <laughs> I love Motown music, things, music of the 60s, 70s, even the yes. 50s. I love that. I he doesn't stop. Oh, yeah. You know, I Temptation. For the band. So we'll, we'll cut a side album later on. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, we're going to cut that out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the the first, first edit we've <laughs> ever had. <laughs> you know what? We'll get that off the editing ground. But no, you got to see Motown the musical if you oh, haven't have seen to. it. I'm trying to. And I think it, Dana Ross, I don't want to plug, but she's coming to Boston sometime soon. But I don't she needs the help, so yeah. please. Yeah. Don't oh, please. <laughs> Whoa! I, I, we'll I talk know. after the show. Right. No, that's cool. So. Mason Betha was not an ins- Well, because I grew up with my grandparents, and so all I know is like music, music from 50 to like uh, 79. It's not till I was with Sons of Serendip I started coming to the 21st we got him a record. We got him a record player for his birthday. Yeah. Oh, all right. Right. Just to let with you know. The, yeah. with, with, the, with the bell on it. With the bell, yeah. yes. Oh, I know the whole nine. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I, I'm really glad that you said, you know, from 50 to 79, or, yeah. you know, because I, I really truly think, and even if you listen now to a lot of contemporary music, yes. R&B, exactly. a lot of it is influenced by music mm-hmm. that was in those genres as well. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think if you have a deep love and admiration for 50s through 70s, then, you know, that, that that's like the foundation right there. Mm. So, all right. Cordero. Yeah. Cordero. Daryl, excuse me. Sorry. Oh, yeah. okay. No not going to get I anything, <laughs> any names, I, right? I, 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 <laughs> Look, uh, Daryl, I've been helping. Yes, they mess his name up all the oh, time. No, I'll just say this. Mr. Rodriguez. Oh, okay, I'll, 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 it's Rodrigo's. <laughs> if it helps, Kevin messes his own name up sometimes. <laughs> Hi, this is Kevron Jin. <laughs> yeah, and it works perfectly. Esquire. <laughs> all right, well, okay, so same with Micah. It was Yanni um, early on, and a lot of uh, film scores. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I, uh, I've played in the church most of my life so there's a lot of so some gospel influences and things so mm. I would say that as far as a particular artist I don't know to be honest I don't really listen to the radio so, so I'm about to say this day and age is not a bad thing <laughs> okay. it's all destructive anyway okay. so, oh, the radio is all about the bass and no treble that is no. true <laughs> that is the only so radio song that I know I don't know what you just said yeah no that, 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 that is true I heard there's a lot of truffle butter on the radio too so. yeah. <laughs> anyways uh, so, uh, I don't know if that's more of the song it's all I know. <laughs> but, all right, well, but that's cool. No, no, I, it, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, I, and you think of like instruments like the harp and the cello, you know, in today's music, mm. unless I'm, you know, I haven't heard it, you know, mm. it's not as pre- prevalent right. unless you go to a symphony or, you know, something exactly. where um, it is praise. So yeah. that's uh, that, that, that's really interesting. Yeah. Now, I, I'm going to uh, ask. Don't you ask guys, number six. Don't ask Do number not six. Ask number oh, please six. ask. I think that's six. the best question, right? I think it's, <laughs> I, I think it's the best. hacky question. It is kind of a hacky question. But I'll ask it, but. We can ask it, but I have to ask it. You're asking. Let me preface it by saying this, though. He's about to ask a question. Let me preface it by saying this. Obviously, as you see with music, biopics seem to be a huge thing. You know, Straight Outta Compton, Ray Charles, um, you know, it it list goes on and on, you know, of, of, of great biopics that have come out in the last decade or so. So, this was a serious question. Since Sons of Serendip is a big group and you know let me ask you guys <laughs> if they ever made a movie about your life <laughs> yeah. who would play you oh. we're gonna go around and each of you guys gonna say which actor would play you we'll start over with Cordero yeah, I, I, I need time to think <laughs> we'll start with Mike, Mike. we'll start with Mason we'll start Shucks. with Mason 
All right, so I'm old school, like you said, like you all know now. So if he could still play the part, it'd be Sidney Poitier. Oh, me. nice. Oh. He even kind of say, he, it's funny the way you said that kind of Poitier. sounded like Sidney Poitier. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be Sidney Poitier. Yeah, but oh, wow. since we're in the 21st century now, in 2015. I don't know, it's not a lot of guys that have the amount of sex appeal that I do. Right. Uh, <laughs> so you, you would play yourself. I would play myself. Of course. You would ooze through the movie that screen. Because, I mean, Morris Chestnut would have nothing on you. Yeah, you know, that's nothing. a joke trying to, you know, exactly. match your sex appeal. Thank so, you. Uh, Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. I, I suffer from that overwhelming of sex appeal as well. Like, it's from you, it's the, it's the Atlanta connection. There you go. Oh, I get the opposite. Yeah. Women faint in a bad way when I walk by. Yeah, that oh. is true. That is, we wow. had to call paramedics several times. It's true. So, all right. Who wants to who wants to take it next? I will go next, and I must say, I would play myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> no so idea. we're just <laughs> making a. We're just, we, yeah, we can. So it would be a documentary then. It wouldn't be actually filmed. <laughs> Everyone would just play themselves. Maybe, no, maybe you guys better way to have to switch. You play Mason. Oh, that would oh, be funny. Wow. Mike, uh, you can be but, Kendall. But that wouldn't be authentic <laughs> to the look, though. It and then, true, yeah. yeah, you know, you, you got to make sure they look like the person, you know, otherwise mm. it'll look like that Aaliyah movie where it, everyone was just different looking, you know, mm. there was like a white person that played R. Kelly. I was like, what? This oh, even <laughs> work out there. So, yeah. But anyways, uh, <laughs> well, I, I would trust uh, Nick Cannon. Why? Because <laughs> I, I think he's, he's a, a. Oh, you have to actor. say that. You're friends with him. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> You're still contracted to speak yeah. nicely. <laughs> you must well, always speak well of uh, <laughs> Professor Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That'd be interesting. Nick yeah. Cannon, I, I. But I, I also <laughs> love Will Smith. I think he's awesome. I can see Will actually more than Nick. Yeah, but, yeah, you but know. It's, it's more so. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop there. <laughs> you can take it. Yeah. I like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all Kendall camera over there too. Still think, yeah. just, he's thinking. To be hard. honest, I don't really know Wesley that many Snipes. actors either. <laughs> sure, yeah. we'll go with Wesley Snipes. <laughs> That's no, actually no, pretty Sam, accurate. Samuel L. Jackson, let's do him. Oh. <laughs> I'm tired of yeah, these say, snakes. Did he even play you angry the whole yeah. time? It's just be angry. That's how what I feel inside, but I just don't. Like, oh, <laughs> you gotta articulate that. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. who would play Vincent, your manager? Mm-hmm. Will I am? Oh no! Oh, oh, Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm Jamal, Jamal Warner. <laughs> yes, he would. Uh, that's kind he of. Would. I don't know. Have you seen him lately? He is huge. Uh, like Jack or? Yeah, like, yeah Jack. Oh. He's, he's on the playing, <laughs> He's playing uh, AC Cowling in the. Uh, I thought you were about to say AC Slater. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's him. He's playing AC Cowling in the uh, FX show about OJ. Oh, American man. Crime Story, oh, co-starring wow. Daniel Weiss, coming out eventually. And he is just not, nice plug on yourself. Thank well, you so much. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I got it. Probably Cuba Gooding. Cuba. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Show me the body. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Funny enough, that. because Cuba Gooding Jr. is playing O.J. Simpson in American Crime Story, coming to FX, co-starring Daniel Weiss. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> coming out eventually. <laughs> wow. So we're the, we're for all the fans, you know the date and time that is coming out? So I don't. It hasn't been announced, but I really want to know because I have <laughs> one line in it. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah, but you can, still, you can still the show with one line. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible. I won't, but you can. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you make the women on set faint. That's all. That matters. <laughs> well, I do because I don't shower. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> TMI, TMI. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess speaking of projects coming out and things of that sort, you know, uh, wh- wh- what's next for you guys this upcoming year? And, uh, you know, what can your fans be looking forward to uh, seeing from you guys? Uh, yes, yeah, so we're working on our first full Christmas album, which we're really uh, oh. excited about. We, we partnered up with uh, Pledge Music. Uh, it's the same same company that we, we partnered up with uh, last year for our, our debut album. Uh, so yeah, you know, supporters can, can go there and, and, you know, look at a lot of exclusives. And it's a way just for them to sew into our journey. Um, and we're looking to, when are we looking to release that? We're not 100% sure. Early. February? Look forward to no, February. No, February. <laughs> Hopefully not. February. End of October. Coming November. soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Should they just check out your website for that coming soon? Yeah, on our, on our website, yes, we have that information as well. Sonsofserendip.com. All right. Especially well, that tour date. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. right, real quick, uh, do you each have a different favorite Christmas song that you're happy you get to do on this? I or not so. do on this? I think so. Great, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are releasing a, an original on this album too. Oh, so yeah. It'll be a, 
a new Christmas song for people to hear. Okay, yeah, good, yeah. 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 Well, no, no I, I like original Christmas music because obviously the classics are great, but we've see, we've heard so many renditions of them and stuff like that. So anytime you hear original Christmas songs, right. that's a darn good thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just saying, Mason, yes, you, uh, you have a favorite? I saw you get excited. I, I did, I, yeah, I tried to contain myself, but I think you'll <laughs> like it as well. Is it Mariah Carey? How did you know? But she's very uh, great. Oh, but, oh. Uh, this Temptation, Christ Silent Night. No, they oh. wouldn't let me do it. I asked, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> this Christmas, Dunny Hathaway. Oh, yeah, man. That's nice. Yeah. That's, that's, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? I feel like roasting some marshmallows right now. You know, I, that one. I have yeah. some in the car. Perfect. Let's, is the album done, and is it too late <laughs> to make a request? Yeah, it's pretty much done. They can't do ACDC back in black for Christmas. That's not a Christmas song. <laughs> uh, well, and then, any release on your website of doing dreidel. Hmm. We talked about it, didn't we? Get, get, get a little Hanukkah yeah. yeah. for your Jewish, right? yeah, little, for your Jewish yeah. fans. For my true. people. Yeah. 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 We did talk about it. Yeah, we did. I'm just yeah. kidding. Don't do that. I'm afraid. <laughs> what you guys can do is just on your album cover for the Christmas, just all wear yarmulkes, and then that See, way they can encompass them. We have to think that's about that. true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, before, before we get out of here, you know, I'm, I'm just curious. You know, the, uh, you know, with, with these tours and you know, people flying from Brazil and all this kind of stuff going on. What what has been your most memorable fan experience thus far? Other than oh, this wow. right now, because we know that's the time. <laughs> you know, yeah, of course. Mm, that's good. I'd yeah. say. If, uh, what? I mean, if you guys all have different ones too, we'd yeah, love to hear them all. Yeah, you go first, man. Yeah. You go first, Michael, if you please. Okay. Right. <laughs> At the same time. This is the kindest no. group ever. Yeah, <laughs> after you, Micah, please. No, no Mason. After you. <laughs> no egos on other. But watch. After they win about seven Grammys, I'm back here. Gonna, hey, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Right on, right. in separate studios. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Where's my dressing room? All yeah, right. right. I need my trailer here. We each have a manager. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Um, for me, it's when people write in to talk about uh, how the music has affected their lives mm. uh, in some positive ways. Um, so yeah, so some of the stories that people have shared with us, with us have been really just moving stories. Like some of them have brought us to tears. Mm. Um, wow. Because yeah, just people just seem to be letting us letting our music into some really sacred spaces for them, mm -hmm. and I think for uh, for me, um, and I'd say for you know the guys in the group too, uh, that that means a lot to us. Yeah. 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 And the, the cool thing with, with those stories is we really do appreciate them. Many times we start our rehearsals with them. Yeah. So we'll just take one of these stories from someone you know from somewhere around the world, and we'll just read it, Mike or Mason will, will read it, and I think we just sit with it and kind of just meditate, and it just helps us to remember why we're doing this. Wow. Yeah. That's I mean, it just goes to show how powerful and impactful music can be, you yeah. know, and I guess therapeutic it can be to people. And Absolutely. Right. Empowering, so, uh, yeah. Mason. I was actually going to say the same thing. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't, can't copy that. No, you can't no seriously. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I promise. I promise those. Yeah. 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 All right. Cordero. Um... <laughs> it's all a blur. <laughs> it's all everything. Every um, he's all the groupies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's um. Yeah, there's, I guess there's because there's so many stories because we hear from so many people. Um, it it's uh hard to pinpoint one as favorite because they're all unique, all mm. different. Yeah. Um, and then each perf in terms of like the performance and like engagement with the fans, um. I guess the the more recent one I can say is the we were we just performed a couple of days ago at a high school mm. and um, never thought of our music as being that would something that would appeal to high school students but mm. they were just enthusiastic and oh, singing so, yeah that was amazing. Amazing. Wow. so that was a really yeah. I said, this must not have been a high school in East Oakland because uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're intense. Yeah, you never know them. Yeah. It, was, it was a middle school and a high school. It was yeah. middle school oh, wow. students in high school. Yeah, and they did. Just they know your songs? It. They, they did. A lot of them. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. That really, that, no, that's. A, I mean, just to show that obviously, because when you think classical music, you think older demographic, mm -hmm. but to show like middle school, adolescents, high schools dig you guys Maybe. and love you guys. I mean, that's 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 powerful. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah, but a middle school like takes out their cell phone and yeah. waves oh, it back yeah, and forth like. Yeah. You know, and then you start a, thinking, I had a pager when I was in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Seriously. Not even that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> we had telegraphs back then. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I remember the original cell phones, those huge ones. Oh, big exactly. Brick. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Brick. The Zach Morris. Exactly. Oh, Morris. Phone. Uh. <laughs> exactly. That was actually a really good, uh, you know, demonstration of the the phone. But at any rate, <laughs> thank uh, you. <laughs> no, I mean, not, not anyone can emulate one of those old school phones. So. That's very true. Very that's talented, Daniel. Takes talent. <laughs> thanks. Well, yeah. I uh, studied for four hundred years. Uh, improv of phones, and I'm uh, pretty good at it now. <laughs> well, anyways, speaking of 400 years, your guys' music is timeless, and we'll go on 400 years until then. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we thank you guys, obviously, for making the time in your busy, uh, hectic schedule to make it here today. I know you have a plane flight to catch in like 20 minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's going to pick you up from here. <laughs> helicopter down. Right, right. Actually, you no, know, that'll track. be eight years from now when they come back when they have right. a helicopter. A separate down. helicopter. Separate <laughs> helicopter. <right? laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, we, we really appreciate that, and you know we, we enjoyed watching you guys on the show, and just mm. to see that you guys are so humble and mm. you know just grounded in real life, kind of like you are in there is amazing. You know, yeah, so thank you guys so much. And so again, everyone can find you at sonsofserendip.com. Yeah, and please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, uh, Periscope. Yeah. What else? You guys, Periscope, Snapchat, do all that stuff. Yeah, we're, 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 we're learning to it. We're learning. We're getting on Snapchat. Now. I'm about to say the kids at the school were probably they Periscoping. Snapchat that's what it you guys right. as they were doing it, so, you know. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to plug the album. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, Christmas album. Uh, wait, is the Christmas album we're talking about? Oh, please pre-order our Christmas oh, yes. album. Go to playthrough.com. Yes. Be the first to get yeah, it before will. anyone else as soon as it comes out. Absolutely. And the thing about this, too, is that we're actually personally putting the CDs in the packages with oh, wow. a message for each person that pledges. Yeah. So. Yeah, person and if you pre-order it, it last one and it took well. a long <laughs> time. But we got it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And if you pre-order it and say that you heard them on AfterBuzz, Kevin and I will sign it as well. That's don't not going to yes. happen. <laughs> no, that <laughs> is right. That is right. Don't, don't expect that. It won't happen. <laughs> we'll send you a napkin separately. <laughs> well, guys, thank you again oh, so much for you. coming in. Really appreciate it, guys. Definitely make sure that you continue to support these guys right yes. here. And, uh, yeah, we, we appreciate you guys for watching. If you want to learn more about them, you can find them on their website, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, everything. MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> Friendster. <laughs> BlackPlanet.com. <Yeah. laughs> you can check it all out. Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah. <laughs> the original. Indeed. The original. Yes. Well, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Super yeah. Group, thank you Sons of Serendip. And thank sure you all for listening out. and watching us on YouTubes. That's right. I'm Kevin John. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Hey Kevin John. Daniel Weiss. Quick, I am Daniel Weiss. You can find me on It's Daniel Weiss on the Twitter. On the Twitter. On the Twitter. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter.com. Thank yes. you. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thanks for having me. Catch us. you next time. Sons of Serendip, take us out with a song or a, a, a note. You're going to put them on the spot? I don't know. Uh, who's ever in the sound booth? There you go. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterbuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of Afterbuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of Afterbuzz TV or its owners or principals.